is JU. Um, I'm working with Alpha 7 Trading Academy uh, to put together their trading training trader training program. Just to give you a little information about myself, I've been around for over 15 years uh, with the markets, documenting my journey as a trader uh, through multiple book releases, um, of which the latest is Way of the Trade. It just came out in August of 2013 by Bloomberg Press. Um, I've, I've had over uh, 10,000 traders worldwide since 1998. Go to my site, undergroundtrader.com. was vo voted Forbes Best of the Web four years in a row. Um, you can look for me in uh, the uh, tech, uh, Stocks and Commodities magazine, uh, the December issue coming out in the second week in November, I'll be doing an, uh, an inter interview with the editor. And basically, I've been through the whole, uh, the whole gamut uh, from the, from the Sows Bandit days to the decimalization, the bull market, the internet mania, bull market, bear market, um, bubbles. Uh, right on down to the HFT, HFT algorithm infested market landscape that we're in right now, which I call the thunder and tumbleweeds market landscape. And that is because with these algorithm programs, well, these algos and the HFTs, um, <clears throat> they, they are the apex predators out there. And in the training, I explain that there's four types of participants in the markets. You have your institutions, they have the bazookas, you have your HFT programs, they have the apex predators, they're like the AK-47s, you've got your uh, specialists, okay, the snipers, market makers, um, specialists, okay, that's the third type, the snipers, because they have, they have the advantage of um, having order flow information. And then you've got the rest, the rest of the traders, right? So, because of all the HFT programs and the algorithm programs that are out there, what they like to do is real simple. They like to extort liquidity. Bottom line, that's all it all, all boils down to, okay? It all boils down to liquidity. And whether they're hitting the dark pools, whether they're going 10 thousandths of a penny, um, when they see an opportunity, they're in, they have a 30 millisecond advantage, even faster than that, and they will take that liquidity, take all the liquidity, and then basically wave it out there, ransom it for the, most, for the highest price. Now, a lot of people complained about that because they're saying, hey, it's not a fair market. Well, it is the, it's the markets, bottom line. Okay, if there if the markets weren't even playing field, they would be static, and they, they wouldn't be markets. But the HFTs they do have an advantage. The algorithms have an advantage. They have the advantage of speed. They have the advantage of rapid fire. But understand something. My enemy's enemy is my friend, and that's what the one thing you got to keep in mind. Because because of the HFTs and the algorithms. Um, what you end up getting in a what I call a wet climate, and that's where you have the most active participants. That means that you have HFTs, algos leapfrogging over each other, okay, trying to outgun the rest of the participants out there, but they don't care. All right, they're all trying to take that liquidity. Then you have the institutions, and they're firing off the bazookas, and during that chaos. That's what we call a wet climate because you have liquidity there. The HFTs don't have to worry about you. They don't have to worry about the little guys because they're too busy trying to leapfrog each other. So the result of that is explosive is explosive action. Okay, you get explosive action. You get uh, magnified price movements, and that's the best part. That you know. That's where you step into a position, and it's like stepping into a riptide, and it just rips. 
Okay, but understand that th that is short-lived throughout the day because ultimately, and that's what we call the thunder, ultimately the tumbleweeds roll right back in. And the problem with a lot of traders, especially a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, retail traders, is that they get caught up in that thunder and then the next thing you know, they're trapped in a situation where it's all tumbleweeds. So it's about trying to game the HFTs and the algorithm programs. Okay, as long as they're around, to me, they're a good thing. If you have a system that works, if you have a system that can spot when that momentum is going to hit and when it's going to explode, okay, then and you can capitalize on it, the profits and those moves are always going to be there. The hardest part okay, is, first of all, building your foundation, learning the methods, and pacing yourself. And I discussed in prior prior webinars, in the prior webinar, uh, you know, the, the iceberg. And what everybody sees when they see an iceberg, they see the tip of the iceberg, which is only 10%. And that's the part that that is above the water that's the shallow portion of the iceberg but the other 90 percent is a foundation that lies beneath the water so when people see oh man that was a nice trade oh that was a great alert oh i made money on that okay that's nice but the reality is that unless you build the foundation underneath okay that is just temporary the money is just temporary the markets are a minus sum game and eventually it's going to be minus right out of your account. So today what I want to talk about is the seasoned trader. Now in my prior webinar I talked about the four stages of trader evolution. We have the first stage right here which is the acclimation period or the acclimation stage. We have the conditioning stage we have the seasoning stage and then the specialization stage. Well, I want to talk about the seasoning stage. Now, <clears throat> I don't want you guys to get the impression that you can just jump right ahead to the seasoning stage because, look, the bottom line is the market, the market is a cannibalistic beast. It likes to prey upon its own participants. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. The markets themselves have not evolved. Okay, the dark pools of today like the internet terminals of you know, the 1990s. It's just mutated. However, the responsibility of evolving lies solely in the hands of its participants. So understand that the market is always going to know. It's going to find out. It's the market's going to exploit if you have weaknesses, which I like to call impediments. If you have impediments, the market is going to expose them. The market's going to find a way to expose them. And the only way you can galvanize yourself is to properly work through each stage of, ev of, of the four stages of evolution. The condition, the acclimation stage is where you first learn about the building blocks of price action. You learn about the, uh, the, the foundation okay, of, 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 of chart patterns. You learn about the mechanics of the markets in general. You get to the conditioning stage is where you start to put the patterns together. You take the classic patterns and then the more proprietary patterns like the pups, the mini pups, perfect storms. You watch that play out and as you condition yourself, you continue, continue conditioning yourself and you follow the routines, uh, the templates, the proper templates, Okay, ultimately, you're going to get to that seasoning stage. Now, let me tell you, the seasoning stage does not come without pain. Okay, um, just like when you think about uh, seasoning, you know, let's take a look at that word. What is seasoning? Well, when it comes to food, what's seasoning? It's you know, spices to enhance the flavor. For wood, when you season the wood for your fireplace, what, what's that mean? That's well, you know, you're, you're adjusting the moisture content of the wood to make it more suitable to burn as timber. What about for cast iron pans right when you buy a cast iron pans I, I don't know how many of you guys uh, ladies and gentlemen out there you know cook with cast iron but uh, there are people who have had their, their cast iron pans for 50 50 years and 
They season it, and with time, it becomes more smoother than any nonstick pan you could get out there. Okay, it, it, it fills the pores and the voids with oil, lubricates, and it enhances the flavor. People swear by that. And for the trader, a seasoned trader is very much like that cast iron pan. It, first of all, it takes time. All right? It does take time, and you're going to have to um, have your ups and downs. Okay? You're going to have to learn the uh, templates. Now, you can learn them the hard way firsthand. Okay. There's a lot of free stuff on the internet. People say, oh, don't pay for training, don't pay for information. You know what? That's fine. Okay. You, there is a learning curve. And it can be very costly. Um, or, you know, there are places like Alpha 7 Trading Academy where a lot of that legwork's been done. It's been done by seasoned traders. And you get the information that's going to help you avoid the pitfalls out there okay, um, so that you will be able to speed up your evolutionary process. So as far as a trader, what's a seasoned trader? Wow, I could go on all night about what a seasoned trader is. Just like a seasoned uh, fighter, you know. When I, when I talk about a seasoned fighter, for those of you who are boxing fans, first, first, first fighter that comes to mind is Bernard Hopkins. The executioner, Bernard Hopkins. Okay, he, 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 in his 40s, I think he's almost 50 years old. All right, he captured another champ, world, world championship titles. And through all the years, he never took any major damage. Okay, he's able to deflect punches, he's able to not take damage, he's able to conserve. His energy, he's able to turn it on when it needs to. He has ring, what they call a uh, 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 ring generalship. He knows the nuances. He can take, he can take on a fighter who is going to come after him and wear him out, bide his time. It's they're not the prettiest. It's his fights are not the most prettiest fights, but he wins. Okay, so in essence, that's what a seasoned trader is. It's not going to be the prettiest, not going to be the most dynamic trading, but ultimately, in the end, the losses are going to be small, the gains are going to be larger, and it's going to happen day in and day out, day in and day out, consistency. And with that consistency, it galvanizes the existing templates. See, a template, a template's like a blueprint, okay? And just like a cast iron pan, you know, the more you use it, the more you use it, you know, the smoother it gets, the more embedded it gets, the, the better it tastes, okay? That's what a template is. Every one of you has a template, when it, a behavioral template when it comes to trading, um, you know, there's a uh, the trade sequence template. Okay, there's you have a template that is pretty much the blueprint of your behavior, of all your actions. So, in order to evolve as a trader, the template has to be what I can, well what what I call a proper template. Number one, it's got to be a proper template, and it's so easy to get off that properness. And the market loves to do that. It loves to rattle you. Okay? It loves to make you think that, you, hey, I'm on the right path. You know, I had a good day. And then just whack you. In fact, you know, one of, the, one of the easiest ways you get hurt is when you have a string of winning days. When you have, you know, um, steady gains, steady gains, steady gains. Because it, it, you're, you're that much closer. You're that much closer to getting hit. And when you get hit, that's when you're able to minimize it, and at, with time, you're able to handle that. It's just like if you watch Ultimate, Ultimate Fighting, okay, if you watch um, Mixed Martial Arts, when you get a seasoned fighter in there, 
no matter what opponent he's up, he comes up against, okay, he's able to sprawl. He's able to sprawl, you know, which means he's able to, to, to uh, you know, prevent the, the takedowns. He's able to kind of just smother them. You know, when you watch uh, boxers, you know, like the Klitschko's, what do they do? What, what does Vladimir Klitschko do? Okay, if a guy comes at him, you know, all crazy with haymakers, just trying to knock him out. What is it? He uses his size advantage, and he'll clutch, and he'll and he'll lean on him, and he'll clutch, and he'll lean on him until he gets into a position where he wears him out, and then he's just nailing him with the jabs constantly. Boom, boom. And then when he doesn't expect it, boom. You know, with the right. Okay, that's seasoning. So it's something that 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 you're gonna get. Okay, ultimately. If you have the proper templates, you're going to get it. But this is what you want to strive for, to become a seasoned trader. Now, let me talk about the trade sequence. First of all, what is a trade sequence? When we designed the training program, okay, we wanted to make sure, with the Alpha 7, exclusive Alpha 7 training program, we wanted to make sure okay, that, that, that not only do we capture the these uh, the shallow elements okay we want to capture the depth the depth of that iceberg we wanted to make sure that everything was synergistic okay and we labeled and defined everything along the way so the trade sequence for example all right well what is that well, you've heard, oh, well, you know, um, you know, plan your trade and trade the trade your plan. Okay. Well, in a sense, that 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 kind of kind of explains it. But you know, there's three parts to a trade sequence. There's a pre-trade sequence, and in that pre-trade sequence, you're, you're you're deriving the premises for why you should take a trade. Okay. The pattern, what type of setup that is, and then with the with understanding the pattern. That's also going to give you critical information, like the support and resistance levels, okay, and the trigger. All right, what's going to trigger that? Now, that's still somewhat of a shallow view. There's more connected to that. How's the, how, how are the futures looking? How are the SPY and the futures looking? And how's the correlation going there? Because the SPY and the futures, that's the, the headwinds. All right, is there some type of fade going on? And then factoring in the sizing, what kind of sizing should you take? All right. Now, risk and probability, not risk and reward. This isn't swing trading. Risk and probability. That's all done in the pre-trade. Okay. Risk and probability. Once again, not risk and reward. Risk and probability. Risk is is your exposure. All right. And that's defined as your allocation how many shares you're taking, and your duration of holding time. So the, lo the larger your share size, okay, you need to offset that, that exposure with less holding time. And probability. Well, that's the uh, tenacity, the veracity, the validity of your setups. What kind of setup is it? Is, is it a cup and handle setup? You know, is it a wedge? Your classic, you know, your classic patterns, or you know, is it a wedge uh, breakout, a cup and handle breakout with a perfect storm, you know, and you're getting in on a one-minute market structure low. The more premises you have, the stronger your probability. That's the pre-trade sequence, uh, the pre-trade portion of the trade sequence. Then you got your in-trade. That's once you enter that trade. Once you're in, now you got to manage it. You got to monitor. How it's reacting, you gotta monitor your tools. Okay, how's that stochastics? Is it nearing that 80 band? Are we nearing a bumper? Should you be scaling out? How are the futures looking? And it's a constant monitoring of the risk and probability up until that point where you have eliminated your exposure, which means your exit. Now there's a third part to the trade sequence which is often left out. That's the post trade. That's where you got to look back, you got to review and review your performance. Okay? Now, 
Some people think that, oh, man, I sold that sucker too early. Damn it. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, that, <laughs> that's not the post-trades portion of the sequence. In all reality, just to say that, hey, I got out of a trade, you know, I took a, took a 15 cent scalp and then it went, uh, you know, 50 cents higher when I looked at it in the afternoon. All right, well, that's completely uh, apples and oranges. Going back to your premises and going, and going back to the risk and probability, if you're prioritizing that one minute chart, and we use seven time frames, by the way, if you're prioritizing that one minute chart, if that's where you want to take the largest shares, but by abiding by the rules of risk and probability, you don't want to be holding the full size into the one minute uh, peak and then sell off. You want to be selling into the pops. Every time you unload shares, every time you decrease your allocation, it buys you more time. You're allowed to offset it. You see what I'm saying? Okay, you're allowed to offset it. Traders tend to get a little confused. They, they tend to think, yeah, but I think it's going to go higher. Why don't I just hold on to the whole size? Because once that one minute peaks out, you're going to get a pullback. Okay, and that pullback could very well turn into a reversal. So the prudent thing to do is make sure you prioritize okay if it's a one minute time frame that you're playing now you may say well yeah but uh you know i think it's going to go higher well if you think it's going to go higher okay the one minute can only go so far before it exhausts and pulls in a reversion okay a reversion that could turn into a reversal all right no one knows that's the unknown it's all this game is all about probability so a seasoned trader is going to be able to factor that in and say, look, it could go higher. I know it's probably going to go higher, okay? But you're not going to take the chance of holding the max shares all the way through uh, into the afternoon right, when you know that that one minute is looking to exhaust. I mean, you know, at Twitter, for those of you who play Twitter today, you know, Twitter, um, it, 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 it squeezed hard up through that 48 area. And when it broke through there, it looked like no, every, everybody and their grandmother wanted Twitter. It didn't look like that thing was going to sell off. But what happened? Ultimately, Twitter had to get a reversion. It was an ex actually a very excessive grind to the upside. The spy, the futures were all selling off. It, today was so, it, it, you know, it's like all the all, all the financial news networks. They were all focusing on Twitter. It's like look at the left get hit by the right, and they were just dumping the crap out of the futures. But ultimately, ultimately, you know, when you get an excessive move like that, it's got it's gonna sell off. So understand, okay. Pre-trade, in-trade, and post-trade. Post-trade is where you do a thorough, uh, an objective assessment of your performance. And understand that a, a well-managed loss trumps a poorly managed win. Okay? I, can't, uh, I can't tell you that enough times. I can't tell you enough time. how many times, you know, a newbie's going to, uh, come in and take a, you know, a trade, and for some, somehow the trade ends up green. He sits through a, ma a nasty loss. He comes back and he makes money, and it's the worst thing that could happen to him. Because what does that do? That's that sets a bad precedent, and that already has has uh, has poisoned his template. So the template, you can figure it out by yourself. Or you can have professionals okay, help you help you with the proper templates. Um, these are the attributes. What uh, what I what I deem the attributes of a seasoned trader. Bottom line is this: they can see things before others see them. Okay, and it's not because they're 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 gifted, all right? Or you're born with ESP, or uh, you got a bionic eye. <laughs> It means you've been around 
You've seen it enough times, but you know what to look for. A seasoned trader can take a smaller amount of information because he's been there before. That's what it all boils down to. You've done it before and is familiar. He's familiar with how the rest of the pattern is going to play out or could play out. And because you have that extra insight and the extra uh, speed, I guess, okay, the acute ability to see before others see, you can react quicker than others. And in this game, like I said, when you have the HFTs and the algos sniffing and just trying to steal and extort that liquidity, okay, that, that definitely comes into play. That is definitely a skill that you want to have. People talk about intuition versus instinct. Well, instinct is something you're born with. Okay, intuition well, that's something that you you gain. You gain because you know what to look for. That's the other thing. Okay, take two guys and have them look at look at the screens day in and day out, day in and day out. And you're going to get two guys who likely look at, you know, see something different. So who's the right, who's going to be right? You know, well, the market's going to prove to you, show you who's going to be right ultimately. Okay. As long as you know what you're looking for, someone gives you a clue, and you're able to, 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 to focus, to stream your, your focus into that pipeline, you're going to have the advantage. And that's all part of building your intu intuition. And then going back to what I talked about, templates, galvanizing your templates, your ability to adjust and recalibrate those templates to react, to be able to react, to re refine your reactions. You have the discipline, the ability to be frugal with your trades and your ammo, your bankroll, or be abundant when you got to, when, when, when something triggers you're able to go hard and heavy. That not only applies to your capital, guys, your buying power and, and your trade size, but also your focus, your energy, your focus energy. Because if you, one, one of the biggest pitfalls with traders is that they'll treat the open just like the middle of the day. And there's a big difference. The open is flexible. It's lenient. What others perceive as chaos, there is a, there is liquidity, there is follow through, leniency, there is flexibility with prices. This is all part of what I call a wet trading climate. And then you have the middle of the afternoon where the volume thins out and prices get more rigid. That's what I call a dry climate. And no matter what you may think, the reality is that everyone has a tank, a limited capacity when it comes to focus and that focus energy. And when you wake up in the morning, your tank is full. Let me tell you something. Okay, during periods when you're in the, you know, during the market day, you can spend just as much energy watching when it doesn't, when you shouldn't be watching too closely. As opposed to watching when you should be zoomed in like a laser, like a laser beam. You can expend the same amount of energy. A seasoned trader is going to know this because they've been around and they know when to be frugal with it and when and when they have to uh, hit the NOS. Okay? Seasoned traders are able to control their pacing, the pacing of not only their activity, but also their focus. Okay, when to clamp down that focus okay, and when to ease up. Basically, get up and walk away. It's a waste of your time. A waste of your time because the market wants you to watch closely in light volume to mess with your head. So that when the volume returns, it's got you thinking one way so it can trap you the other way. That's, you know, I, I don't know how great these algo programmers are, okay, but the market in and of itself always wants to trap the most people on the wrong side, okay. 
And that just all goes back to the simple fact that the markets are a minus sum game. Statistically, everyone can't win. That's just not possible. It's a minus sum game. All right, so I'm sure you guys can read the attributes of a seasoned trader, okay? Um, the battle calm, I talked about that in my last webinar. That's what you gain because, once again, you are familiar. Okay? The familiarity is what breeds confidence, okay? But you got to always be careful that that confidence doesn't turn into complacency. So that has to be nurtured and it has to be controlled. It has to be well, paste. All right, and the four critical elements for seasoning. Rituals, okay, and I talk about this in the training. Preparation routine, I do this every morning, okay? You guys should be doing this every morning. It only takes about 30 minutes. And you basically put everything that looks interesting, that could be edible, on your food plate, which is what I call a watch list on your food plate and you follow that ritual and that routine consistently every morning see as traders what are we trying to do we're trying to eke out consistent money out of the markets we're trying to squeeze that money out of the markets every single day we want consistency what is the market trying to do trying to be as inconsistent as possible the markets the markets when something becomes too transparent what does it do? It loves to reverse it on you. Okay, the markets don't want you to be consistent. But here's an interesting thing. Okay, if you maintain consistency with your routine, that in and of itself is going to create consistency with your performance, ultimately. Okay, I believe in that a thousand percent. It's called the law of reciprocity of the five laws in the marketplace. That's one of them. All right. And then your templates, your trade sequence templates, which the trade sequence we went over, your behavioral templates, uh, your pacing, your management, your trade, money, risk, you know, money, risk, probability management, pattern sequences. This is and this is what everybody focuses on so much. You know, being able to recognize patterns in all of the content context people love to throw out you know hey th that, that looks 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 like a cup and handle you know that looks like a head and shoulders you know they like to connect lines and dots and whatnot okay, but that's the shallow part guys all right that's shallow you got to get into the mechanics the parts the moving components and how they create that price reaction and this is all part of the training and the application sequences. You know, my latest book, Way of the Trade, tactical applications of underground trading method, tra uh, trading methods for investors and traders. Okay, the application. So you can take. I can. I can sit here until I'm red and blue in the face and try to explain to you what a pup pattern is, what a mini pup pattern is. Okay, but until you get your feet wet and actually make that first trade. And you feel the power of what a one-minute mini pup looks like going through a 20 band. Even as the futures are selling off, okay, you're not going to be able to appreciate it. You're not going to be able to appreciate the power of a perfect storm until you've got some skin in the game. You dip your toes into one. And you feel that, that riptide just pull. <laughs> and it moves so fast. It moves so fast. You know, right, right, right through the bumpers. You wonder, you wonder if your quotes are, 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 are working right, okay? Power of a perfect storm. So let's move forward. Let's, let's, go, let's go into the applications, all right? Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the methods, okay? But what I want to do now is I want to go over, I want to go over some trade sequences. Um, during the earnings season, which is four times a year, that's the Super Bowl, of wet climates a macro wet climate okay overall the markets are, are, are reactive and they're ready to move and then 
on a micro basis, well, you know, stocks come out with earnings, they're going to report, and the stocks that are gapping up big or gapping down big, okay, they're, they're going to have action, and they're going to have the most participants. And whenever you have the most participants, that's where there's food, food, there's, there's you know, nourishment. So, for this example, let's take a look at Under Armour. And this was on their, uh, the morning after their earnings were released. And as you can see, um, you know, do you see any setups here? When you see something like this, and just to break it down, this is a one minute chart, a five minute, and a 15 minute chart. We have our moving averages, okay, and the yellow and the green, five, 15 period simple moving averages. We have the Bollinger Bands. So this is like a roadmap, and these are the stochastics. This is the, the engine. And in the training, I talk about you know, perspective. Using simply a one minute chart, it's only going to give you one slice okay, of the perception and the perspective of, of that stock. Now, one minute, chart, one minute chart alone in and of itself is very good is very good if you have the right the right template and the right methods to trade it with okay but it's going to have its flaws when you add the five minute it expands the perspective a little more all right the five and the one those two in and of itself okay that's like um i often like to use the brady bunch example you know you got little bobby brady He's a, and he's a tough cat, all right? But when you add Bobby, okay, with Peter, well, those two are very tough together, okay? And that's going to be enough for most scalpers. However, there are times where the five and the one can get blindsided. It's so little Bobby and old Peter Brady. They're high-fiving each other, toughest dudes in the neighborhood, and then they get run over and blindsided. That's when you got to bring in, uh, uh, who, who's that guy? Uh, Greg, okay? <laughs> got to bring in Greg, and that's the 15-minute chart. Now, these three, that's going to be enough for you to trade most wet climates, okay? However, we get to the other time frames, the 60, the daily, the weekly, the monthly. They're all going to have an effect on the price action. Okay, at certain price levels. And, you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. You get a little deeper, you get a little deeper. By the time you get to the daily, weekly, okay. Now, the weekly and the month, they may not apply, okay. If they're bumpers, which are what I call these, uh, the, the moving averages and the Bollinger Bands. If the bumpers are not around or stocks are trading near the bumpers, then they're not going to be uh, effective. Okay? They're not going to matter. But they, if there's a pup or a mini pup, they're lying dormant. And that's the word you want to keep in mind, dormant. Okay, so anyway, going back to this example, what do we see here? Is there anything that's uh, possibly playable? And this is something, uh, this is Under Armour, and it's right after the open. Okay, now right off the bat, I would notice the five-minute forming a mini pup here. You have a five-period moving average sloping up. It looks choppy, but, but now... What I talk about also, what we talk about in the trader training, okay, is the boss charts. Those of you who've been around, you know, back in the heydays of, of day trading, right, back in the, the 90s, you know, very early 2000s, you had your level two screen, you had your axe market makers, right, to kind of get the tell. Well, those are long gone, okay, but we have a new version of an axe type market maker, and that's what we call a boss chart, because either... Peter or Greg okay, is going to be the one in charge. And the market doesn't like to show you that. But when you have volume, okay, when you have volume, that's the true serum. And ultimately, the boss will show, peek its head. And that's who you want to use as literally an axe market maker, an axe time frame. All right, so what I'm going to do here now is I want to... I want to go ahead and play you the two se trade sequences. Um, I've already got the audio queued up on here, guys. So 
Let me know if you guys are having problems hearing it. And I'm going to start. So please let me know if you guys have problems hearing the audio. Under Armour is a gap down dumper on earnings. Oh, Under Armour is a gap down dumper on earnings. And the market has just opened. We're two minutes into the open. 50-minute has a mini inverse pub breakout. Five minutes looking at the inverse pub breakdown as a one-minute stock gas crosses down. Now, one minute stock gas, this one is a mini inverse pub. All three are going to form an, a perfect zone breakout. We went ahead and took 500 shares short at 78.35. And we're looking for a perfect zone breakdown here. We've got the one minute mini inverse pub, five minute inverse pub, 15 minute mini inverse pub. The first, first inside of the five minutes moves extremely fast. This is only for seasoned traders. As soon as we're in, we're already looking, we're already looking to place our limits, limit orders to go ahead and get out of this thing. We know 7750 is a coil support. Right now it's overshooting. As the one minute makes a lean through that 20, 20 band, we want to take advantage of that liquidity and cover into the flush down, which is exactly what we did. We're out at 7778, 500 shares on 47 cent gain for plus 288 profit. Now keep an eye on that 7740, 50, and 60. That's what we call the stinky 250 support area. This is where a lot of newbies will jump in, try to find liquidity, chase the short down, and that's exactly what the algos want. They want to tease you, pull it away from you, steal the liquidity, make you jump in, and then what we see so many times, we get that flush right back up, trapping the newbies. So stay out of that first five minutes unless you are a seasoned trader. Now, as you become more seasoned, you see things faster, and that's what seasoning is all about. Noticing all the little nuances and intricacies faster than the average trader. Okay? Faster than anyone who's just pulling up the stock. Because you've been there, you've been there, you've done it enough times. It's seasoning. And that, my friends, takes time and experience. Have the commitment, put the time into it, okay? and then you too can play in the first five minutes if the setup is there. Once again, Under Armour was a gapper. This is what we call a dumper. Short on a perfect storm breakdown. We caught the liquidity. We're in, we're out. And look where it's trading at now. Pop back up to 7870s. Anyone who chased the stinky 250s just got flushed right back up. It's 9.34 a.m. And that 9.35 candle closed. That's when you want to first start watching thereafter to uh, look to play the opening sequence. Okay, now we're watching the Under Armour dumper. This is after the first five minutes. We are eight to nine minutes into the open. And we're watching now as the five minutes now trying to form a mini pup. And the 15 minutes trying to cross up. One minute trying to form a mini pup. We take 1,500 shares to the long side because Under Armour is actually by fading against the spy. If they go to the spy and the charts down below, then you'll notice that Under Armour is actually by fading. Notice also the one minute. Once it made the coil up at stinky 7750s, stinky 250s area, it peaked, it pulled back, and then it stalled. It's stalling right now at the 80 dam. Okay, the five minute has a mini pup. The 15 minute is trading above the five period moving average, teasing a crossover. Now take a look at the spy. The spy leaned down. Okay, the spy is making a lean down, and look at Under Armour. It should be selling off, but actually it is holding up, and the 5 and 515s uh, moving averages, okay, the middle chart up top, you'll notice how tight that 515 period moving average is. Now, just now, 940, look at that. Look at the stochastics in the 5 minute. Formed a mini pup, okay? On that close, formed a mini pup. So if you're just looking at level 2, you might be saying to yourself, oh man, this thing is not, you know, just look at the spy, spy setting up, this thing is not bouncing. But if you have the rifle charts, you'll notice the 5 minute. Notice how the yellow line, it says D slow, uh, D slo slopes up. That's called a mini pup. So that's the ace up our sleeves. Five minute has a mini pup. One minute has a mini pup. Look at the spy, 174.60. Remember, 174.60, 50, 40 is the stinky fives levels. Don't even need a chart for that. So the spy is selling off right here, 174.60, 50, 40. Those are bounce levels. Got to keep that in mind. While everyone else is panicking, okay, while everyone else is panicking, you have to keep an eye 
on the prize and understand that this is actually where the spy could bounce. And so we take a look at Under Armour, and 79 is a key break. Look at that. One minute takes a mini pup, five minutes takes a mini pup. We already placed in our sell order, 79, 21, 79, 25 for 500 shares apiece. And as the SPY makes even the smallest coil, Under Armour squeezes a perfect storm breakout to the upside. And we get filled 500 out at 79.22, 500 out at 79.31. Those orders were placed ahead of time. Those are nominal, those are nominal uh, breakout levels. Obviously, we look now, they're uh, pretty conservative, all right, but we still have 500 shares here. And this is what we call stinky fives levels. And 79, 40, 50, 60 is a stinky fives level. So when you get a spike up through those levels, you want to be taking your profits. So um, the five minute and the one minute, when you get a dual mini pup and the one minute stalls at the 80 band forms a mini pup, it's called a plan A, B, long setup. And that's exactly what triggered here. One minute's going through that 80 band, and a five minutes forming a mini pump up towards the five minute 20 period moving average. We went ahead and sold another 300 shares out, 79.66. We have 200 more shares left. And look at this thing go. One minute trying to squeeze higher. We see that the 80, 80, or actually 79, 90, 70, 79, 90, 90 to 80 is a five minute 20 period moving average. And this thing is all just setting up right here. And now look at the SPY. Keep an eye on the SPY too. 70, 174.50, okay, 51, 55, I'm sorry, is where it coiled off of. And as the SPY also makes a coil, all it does is give Under Armour more juice to the upside. You see the one minute candle closed, and now you have a continuation candle trying to form as the SPY takes a coil. But see, the thing is, the beauty about the open, the opening sequence, is even though you have correlation with the SPY, there are times where something is set up, especially perfect storms, where the SPY won't even make too much of an impact, at least in the short term. You gotta keep that in mind. In the short term, ultimately, the SPY will make an impact. But when when you have something like Under Armour that's trapped so many so many shorts okay, within the first five minutes, they trapped a lot of shorts that came in late, and uh, now they've got them on the run. Look at the 80 break. Right off the bat, we know 80, 40, 50, 60. That's called stinky fives, resistance levels. 80, 40, 50, 60. All right? And so this is where you need to be locking the rest of your profits out or taking out more profits right into the pops. Now, uh, we kind of kind of forgot about the uh, extra shares <laughs> that, that we had um, and uh, was a little busy taking screenshots. So um, in, in, in my, in my uh, need to educate, blah, blah, educate blah. and run the chat rooms, Totally forgot about the 200 shares that were still long. Um, and so that's why uh, there's a lesson we learned. And that's the beauty of a wet climate when you're playing gappers and up. The gappers and uppers is you're, you're going to get them four times a year. Okay, so uh, it's, and we gave it the first five minutes. Uh, All right, anyway. <laughs> okay, so um, I hope that made some sense to you guys. This. This is the caliber of the videos that are in the training program. I don't think there's anything like that out there. Um, but understand that right now, a lot of this stuff may go over your heads, okay? And as well it should. And if you're trying right now to literally uh, go back and say, all right, let me see. This is what a mini pup looks like. Okay, Jay, I got it. I got it. Okay. So next time I see this, that means to take a long. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, what you're trying to do is you're trying to pick at the at the tip of the iceberg, okay? I know, trust me, when I tell you that I can sit here and tell you, this is a mini pup, this is a mini pup, now you can try to figure it out, and it's going to take you forever to figure it out. Um, because then you're going to say, well, you know, there's a lot of inconsistencies when I see a mini pup, when I saw a mini pup another time. Well, yeah, that's probably because, you know, the, uh, it, maybe it formed the market structure high, maybe... Uh, you, 
okay, maybe you got in up here. See, keep in mind that these perfect storms, they look great, and they have the most transparency, okay, when they get near full transparency. And that's where I take my screenshots, and you're like, oh, that's great. All right, next time I see this and this, I'm going to go ahead and take it long because that's a perfect storm. But guess what? This is what happens if you chase, okay? It sells right back down. It sold right back down through 79. So the key to being able to catch these is you got to be able to catch them back here. Okay, you got to be able you got to be able to catch them back here at the point at the point of detonation. And it's not it's not just learning about all right, so that means okay, let me backtrack here. No. You got to start at the beginning. Okay, you have to start with the foundation. You got to build the foundation first. You got to know what a counter candle. You get you have to know the mechanics of what creates candles. Okay? You have to know the mechanics of the price action. You got to start from building a foundation below below the sea level okay, and build it up gradually. And that takes commitment. That takes commitment. It takes uh, endurance, okay, during effort. And once you get that type of training, that's when you're going to be able to catch, not only catch this, okay, but to be able to sell into that liquidity, okay, to be able to know, hey, um, you know, this is a stinky fives area, 80, 40 to 60. I don't even have to look at a chart to tell you that. And if you got anything left, you need to be selling into that. Yeah, but what about 83? It looks like it could go there. Uh, take a look at the futures. Okay, take a look at the SPY. Okay, and know that what an excessive move looks like. And this is an excessive move. Why? Why is Under Armour doing such an excessive move? You don't see this type of move every day. Of course not, because there's earnings. And what happened was, back here, this actually formed what looked like a breakdown. Okay, almost a perfect storm breakdown. In fact, we shorted it. Okay, but we got out of it quick enough because we also know 7750 is a stinky 250s coil support area. And if you didn't get out fast enough, they'll spike it right back up. And so all these guys that came in here to short, they got trapped. Bam. Spiked it back up to the 7850s, held them at bay, brought up the five period uh, support slowly, slowly. This is the boss chart right here. Remember I talked about the boss charts? Okay. When they tanked Under Armour off the get-go, off the open, well, the one minute's crossing down. Hell, 15 minute is a, you know, you have the 15 minute five resistance. And look, this is a mini inverse pup about to form. That five minute, oh man, that, you know, that looks like uh, you know, a little Peter Brady is about to get knocked out. And then what happens? The cross down tries to form, and then right before the candle closes, look at this. They love to, others love to do this. Look at this, guys, right here. Look at this red candle. That looks ugly. Okay, that looks ugly. And look at the time. Watch the clock. 9:33 a.m. First five-minute candle closes when 9:35. And look what happens. Look how ugly that candle looks like. And now, here's the thing. While everyone else is saying, hey, this looks like it's going to break down into an inverse, a perfect storm breakdown, a seasoned trader is already going to know, I need to take this trade. I need to minimize my exposure before that 935 candle close. Okay? And the most important thing is I know Under Armour. And I know Stinky 250s. Okay, 77, 60, 50, 40. 72, 60, 50, 40. Uh, 70, 60, 40, uh, uh, 60, 50, 40. I already know these levels. You know them ahead of time so that when you get a fast lean like that, you're always taking profits regardless. It doesn't matter if it drops to 75. You're taking profits. It's all part of the template. And guess what? Look at the time of sales. By 9.34, they're coiling it, right? Okay, 7860, uh, uh, wow, they already coiled it, my bad. Okay, and so by 9, 
by the 935 candle close, okay, they didn't get the cross down, they kissed, and now they cooled it up, and the five-period moving average is sloping up. That's a tell. That's what we call a tell. But every, ultimately, everyone's going to get it. The question is, at what point are you going to be able to get it? At what point are you going to be able to spot that tell? Okay. And being able to spot it and being able to react, well, that's a whole other story. And when you get to that point, that's when you are pushing your evolution. Okay, you're, you're, you're growing, you're manifesting your evolution to that seasoned trader stage. So, let's go back to, all right, so, so let, let, let's break down the trade sequences, okay? So the first trade was that short off the open. Now, take a look at this chart. When you look at the chart, okay, you, you, can, you can look back and say, oh, wow, that looked like a five-minute mini pup, okay? That looked like a five-minute mini pup. Well, guess what? That's because they closed the candle up by the five, first five-minute candle closed. They closed the candle up, so they covered up the conspiracy, okay? They covered their tracks. And so when you look at a chart, a person's going to see the five-minute mini pup and say, oh, wow, there's no reason to short that stock. But as you saw in the video, that's exactly what it looked like, a perfect storm breakdown. So you're able to catch that, clip it, be ready for the five-minute candle close, and when you see it pop it up and form that mini pup, you're ready for your second trade sequence. And the second trade sequence is the beauty. Okay, and that's what we call the second reaction of the three reactions when it comes to earnings. And that second trade sequence, that's where you had the one minute from the mini pup. The spy was selling off so strong, okay, the volume doesn't lie. And with the spy selling off that strong, Under Armour should have collapsed. And when it didn't collapse, that's what we call a buy fade. And that's what Under Armour did. So the moment the SPY bounces, we know there's going to be more juice to the upside. We're already poised with the one-minute mini pup, the five-minute mini pup, okay? The slow grind, and then boom, and the rest is history. And that's, this, that's the difference between a seasoned trader. And so a seasoned trader can take advantage of that first 20 minutes and push it when he has to. Because he has the tools. He's been around the block, done it. Okay? And that's how you make 839 bucks right off the open. And you don't spend the rest of the day giving it away. <laughs> so, going back to what I said, this is what everybody sees. They see this part. Okay? Either they overlook and don't understand that there's this part, or, look, let's be honest, they're just you know, lazy. All right? I think that every one of you who has logged into this webinar tonight. Okay, I believe that you're not lazy, and there's a reason why you logged in. Now, let's get something else straight here. Okay, you can be, you can, you can have 20 years of experience under your belt. That doesn't mean that in this market environment that the seasoning is working. Okay, um, you can. You can repeat a bad template year in and year out, year in and year out. And it's kind of like the drain that gets clogged up, you know, and you no longer feel like you're growing. You're no longer manifesting that evolution. And I'm here to tell you that with Alpha 7 Trading Academy, that is what they do. That's what we do. We unclog that drain so that the water flows again, so that the enlightenment flows again. We free up that clog so that you're able to adapt and grow okay, and galvanize the proper templates to be able to adapt to this environment. Let me tell you something. You're not going to make money every day, but you're going to be able to sprawl when you know you got to sprawl, and you're going to be able to depress it and get aggressive or more, you know, more aggressive okay, when 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 you know you can be more aggressive and 
that pacing is all part of the seasoning process. So it all boils down to specialized trading, training for today's landscape. Okay, as I said, the video that you saw, those are the types of videos that we put together, meticulously captioned and audio and put put it together, okay, so that you're not looking at stale charts. You're not looking at stale charts that will show you the perfect storm at the height of the perfect storm, at the peak transparency, so that you're able to spot it just as a seasoned trader would spot it, okay, get the explanation of everything that's going on at that point, before that point of impact, before it hits the scanners, you know, as it hits new highs. Okay, by that point, transparency is blown and the algos are just ransoming out that liquidity. And you want to get in before that. The right training should encompass everything. The basic building blocks, the components, and most importantly, the nuances and the applications to this current market landscape. Alpha 7 Trading Academy. That's what it all boils down to, guys. The right training. The video course alone has over 30 hours of video. And over 700 plus slides. Live action. Everything is captured meticulously. And, and for those of you who do complete the training program, Okay, Alpha 7 Training Trading Academy. All right, we'll also you know, work on recruiting you to trading hedge fund capital with various hedge funds. And I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll take questions now. And um, once again, uh, for those of you who are interested, feel free to contact Alpha, Tra Alpha 7 Trading Academy. Okay, you have the phone number up there. Um, we also have a representative uh, in the room as well. And uh, any questions, info at alphatrading.com. And I'll give it a couple minutes for you guys for any questions. Uh, Jack, no, I, I don't really, I don't do Forex. Um, the methods themselves are, they're linear, okay, throughout all markets. So uh, I've had uh, people who do trade Forex commodities utilize the training, I mean, or the, um, the methods, okay, but um, for, with Alpha 7 Training Academy, um, it's focused primarily on stocks. If you want to do options, well, you've got to know how the stocks work, the underlying stocks. Okay, yeah, Mark, when I, when I refer to template, um, it, it's a concept, really, is what it boils down to. And a template is, like I said before, a blueprint of how you would normally react um, you know, when a potential trigger forms on a pup okay, or a mini pup or a perfect storm. So first and foremost, you have to understand, you know, what, what those patterns are, okay? You have to have seen perfect storm storms actually form, okay, and break. But let me also add one more thing, okay? When a perfect storm fails, that's even better than a perfect storm. Do you all understand that? When a perfect storm, well, a perfect storm has three, is a combination of three pups and mini pups. Three pups or mini pups, meaning three time frames. So when a perfect storm forms, that's great. It's a rib tie, volume, but you know it's even better than a perfect storm? <laughs> a failed perfect storm. Why is that? Well, because if a perfect storm is the strongest pattern out there, 
you, you know in order to muscle that pattern the other way, you got to be even stronger, right? See, and this is lateral thinking, guys. A, little, a, per, a literal thinking would say, oh, that perfect storm failed. Damn it, I took the stop. All right, move, moving on. But someone who's been trained and understands lateral thinking is going to feel great. Why? Because a perfect storm, strongest pattern. That's my measuring stick. That's my measuring stick, okay? I'm not talking about a, a mediocre pattern or a weak pattern. I'm talking about the strongest pattern. So you're showing me the strongest pattern is failing, okay? Well, that's great. I'm happy to take the stop and reverse it because I know damn well that when a perfect storm reverses, oftentimes it'll form a perfect storm the other way. And those who did not get out, they're trapped. And then they, there's, they panic, okay? So that's the beauty about perfect storms. PUP stands for power uptick. Power uptick. Uh, Mark, yeah, you know what? Each stock does have have their own type of rhythm. Okay, I'm not going to say they have uh, specific rhythms unto themselves completely, or else we'd be saying you know there's over six thousand different you know rhythms. But stocks tend to move. Um, you know. Certain stocks move certain ways. I mean, this it's even almost by the sec sectors, you know. Solar stocks, they're very thin and choppy, and I hate them. And they they all move in one, one type of way, all right. Um, restaurant stocks, and, and it also boils down to the price range, okay, the price range. Um, a lot of times stocks that are trading in similar price ranges are going to move a certain way, Um you know, as far as how thin they are, how thick they are. Um, so it, it really boils down to just your familiarity with these stocks. And you know, the way you get familiar you know, is to see the worst side. Okay, see the worst side. It's like when you meet people, you know. <laughs> you know when, when, you see, when you see people or when you meet people and you, and you see some of the, you know, the worst side sometimes, that's how you truly get to know them. But when it comes to earn, uh, stocks, okay, I like to be introduced to them by literally baptism by fire. All right, when you trade earnings seasons, you're going to see them at their most extreme, okay, at their most strongest or at their most weakest, and then from there, from there, everything else is pretty much cake. All right, in fact, it's it can be too it can be too cake, all right, because it's easy to think that a stock normally moves with this much volatility and, and follow through and volume. When in reality, that's only just during earnings season. But that's how you get to really, it's baptism by fire. It is just throwing yourself right into the pool. That's how you really get to know how a stock truly behaves. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the principles, they apply for longs or shorts. And, they, and they're, they're linear across all markets. Okay, all right, gang. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I, I know we went pretty long tonight. So if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to send emails to info at alpha7trading.com. Um, I, uh, like I said, I, I highly recommend the trader training program. Um, it's very unique. And I help to create it. And I don't go around endorsing a lot of things out there. All right. So I got my hand. You know, I, I help to mold this trading trader training program just because, you know, through the years I've seen uh, painfully at times, I've seen painfully, you know, how people can, can try to learn my methods. And yet it's the application of those methods that they have the worst problems with. And I realized that, you, uh, you know, I'm starting on the surface. People are starting on the surface. They got to actually get down under the water, emerge themselves, okay, immerse themselves, and start with building the foundation. And that in and of itself, okay, that is how you're going to, uh, to grow as a trader and to evolve, okay, so that you can get to that seasoning stage with the proper templates and the proper training. 
And, um, you know, so take a look at the training program, okay? Easy payment plans are available, um, so you don't have to uh, you know, put it all in at, at once. All right, gang. Um, all right, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, and I wish you all well with your, with your trading, and uh, look forward to uh, a lot of you guys joining the Trader Training Program and continuing your trading because we've got a lot of good stuff. Got a lot of good stuff in store for you all. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.